More on that in a minute. Okay. Carlisle Holiday evades the tackle, and Irish fans savor this play. It's one of the rare offensive highlights you have all night. Here's your offensive highlight if you're Notre Dame. But it was a great run. Made a guy yeah. miss. Uh, you know, we needed more of that. Set it, kicks a field goal. It's three zip. Then. Herschel Dennis on the return, fumbles the football, Irish have it. Opportunistic, well, not really. They couldn't get it in the end zone. Another field goal, it's six zip. Finally, Justin Vargas takes the handoff, huge hole, all the way down to the 11-yard line. So oh, standing you. blocking on the left side of the line, just squirts through the hole. It's a great job by the left guard and left tackle. This is a great red zone offense. Mike Williams, the freshman, hauls it in from Palmer. Trojans on top, 7-6. Later, second quarter. Look at the weird protection they wow. made. The unusual formation didn't work. It doesn't work. matter. You still have to count the guys out. You still have your man. Obviously, somebody didn't get two guys. Carlos Pierantum <laughs> breaks through, recovers a touchdown. Notre Dame up. Finding ways to stay in front despite being dominated. But not for long. Palmer, Williams, 17-13 USC at halftime. Third quarter, Palmer really heats up. This is the first drive of the second half. Grant Matos for the big gain all the way down to the 10-yard line. A couple plays later, Palmer, Malafau McKenzie, great cut to the inside, pullback, makes a miss, 24-13. Catch a theme here. I mean, different guys catching the ball at every play. So many weapons. Notre Dame's offense ineffective against the Trojan defense. The screen, time after time, they came short on third down. Didn't have a first down of the second and third quarter. Palomalo is a big hit. The senior playing his final game at the Coliseum. That kind of a night for Holiday. Swarmed under. It was great defensive effort by USC all day. Then Malapo McKenzie finally gathers it in from Palmer, makes the catch into the end zone. USC takes the Fighting Irish behind the woodshed in South Central Los Angeles, 44-13. Williams, 10 for 169. Palmer, 32 of 46, 425 and 4. He was upset that he threw two picks. <laughs> Pete Carroll after it overjoyed to beat the Bruins and the Irish back to back. We made some mistakes early and it didn't even knock us off course. That's what was so extraordinary about it. Our guys believe so much they can get this done and play this kind of a game. And by the time it wore, the game wore on, we got it done. I mean, we're so proud. I'm really humbled by this whole season. It's been a great year for our seniors and our players. We're just so thrilled that we got the end of like this. It's a, just, it's the greatest. This is amazing for these seniors to come together and do this and, and finish out our careers beating UCLA and Notre Dame in the same year. It's, it's an amazing feeling for all of us. I hope we belong in the BCS. We'll see. Uh, I think we played well enough. I think we have a good enough team. It's not our job. All, all we need to worry about is coming out and winning, and we did it. More on Palmer, more on the bowl bid coming up, but check out wow. those <laughs> stats. This game wasn't nearly as close as the final score makes it seem. 610 total yards most ever against Notre Dame. Palmer's 425 most ever passing yards against Notre Dame. But Notre Dame will never win, win a football game when Ryan Grant rushes for 16 yards. I mean, that's the bottom line. We can talk about the offensive performance of SC. It was fantastic, but defensively as well, played outstanding. All sides of the ball, unbelievable. I believe it's just a statement game for USC and Pete Carroll and Trojan saying that we belong in a BCS Bowl. We made a statement tonight to prove to everybody in the land we're one of the best teams in the country, and I think tonight shows that. What to see him play Miami. Absolutely. They're, they're dominant. I mean, that was a thrashing. I'll check out the BCS. CS standings coming into today's game because USC was down there at number six. Miami and Ohio State very comfortable leads. But look how closely bunched it is. Oklahoma, mm. Georgia, Iowa, USC, and Notre Dame, of course, which will drop down. Oklahoma, keep in mind, number three. That's where they were last year when they played Oklahoma State. And the Cowboys spoiled the division title, conference title, and the national title host. Stoops team vowing for revenge, but they could not contain Josh Fields. The quarterback for the Pokes fakes it. Rashad Woods, one of the best receivers in the country, 14 zip very quickly. Fields to Woods. He had the touchdown hat trick in the first half. Blown coverages was 21 6. What's going on, Trent? Well, there was blown coverages, but I also thought Oklahoma State had a great game plan. I mean, just watch Rashawn Wood. You saw the two big plays, but just look here. Sitting down in zones, gets the easy first down. He had 12 catches for three touchdowns. Look at him down here. This is man to man coverage. Just good coverage. Just a beautiful throw by Josh Fields and a nice touchdown. Nice catch. Now, listen here. Look, Josh Fields. There's his tight end, Charlie Johnson, sitting down in that zone once again. I just think that Oklahoma. 
Oklahoma State had a great game plan. Josh Fields once again. Yes, there was breakdowns of Oklahoma's defense. There's the touchdown to the tight end I was talking about. But they sat down in zones and had a great, accurate passer in Josh Fields, and that's why they won the game. You celebrate in Stillwater. They beat Nebraska, then Oklahoma for the first time ever in the same season. See Woods, 12 for 226 and 3. Fields, 357 and 4 touchdowns. This wasn't Baylor in Kansas he was toasting like the last couple weeks. This is the Sooners for 506 yards total offense. Uh, that was more impressive to me. And, and not only that, just Oklahoma's pass defense. I just couldn't believe the way that they couldn't come up. They didn't get any pressure on They couldn't Josh get Fields. to the quarterback. Nope. They couldn't do anything right defensively. Nope. They, they might have play. Texas's number, but Oklahoma State has the Sooners. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Georgia Tech in Georgia. You talk about a dominant championship type performance from a team that sometimes hasn't looked like a top five team. Georgia with really nothing but pride to play for against their rivals between the hedges laid a woodshed weapon on the Yellow Jackets. Musa Smith caps the opening drive. They chew clock, take the quick lead. David Green very sharp. Terrence Edwards back healthy. Parts of deflection here, and he makes the catch. He's trying to kind of break up the interception, ends up making a catch. Yeah, that was an interception all the way, but look at him here. Watch the replays. He comes in, plays defensive back, knocks it down, then has the concentration to hold on. Fred Gibson, another receiver with ball skills. Watch him come back for this one. A nice play action fake. Gets the safety to step up, but right here, adjusting to the football is Fred Gibson. A nice job of hauling it in for the touchdown. J.T. Wall, the fullback, barrels in. It is the worst ever beating by Georgia over Georgia Tech. Green, he only had to complete 10 passes. Shockley came in. He ran for a touchdown. Musa Smith for a buck 21. Back at starting quarterback, and the Knowles, are, are they pumped up for the cross state rivals? A little emotion there. Where's that been all year? Well, Mark said he wouldn't respond to him, but I tell you what, they didn't know about Leon Washington. Look at him here around the end. Touchdown, to Florida State. State. I said they would rally around him. Filling in for Nick Maddox and running well. Then Ricks, he played pretty well. Anquan Bolden, 22-yarder in the second quarter. Knowles up 17-6. But the story, I thought, FSU's defense, Mark. Absolutely right, Chris. Rex Grossman tries to hand the ball off to Ernest Graham. Bam, right there, stuffed by the entire defensive front. Grossman again hands off to Rand Carlton. Nothing there. He's stuffed. And again, Grossman trying to get something going. Picked off. It's tipped up in the air by Kendall Polk. Somebody go after him. A little effort. Something a little light. Nothing. He scores. Bad time of the tight end there. Walker lost it off the shoulder oh, pad. Ben Ricks responds and right here. Grossman throwing to the end zone. It is caught. Grossman trying to rally him, but too much Ricks and Antoine Bolden. He's going to haul it in here, and very satisfying win. Rick's doing a lot with his feet as well. As Florida State goes to 9-4. and four. Florida finishes up 8-4. Graham held to 82. And Florida State rushes for 225. Who needs Greg Jones and Maddox with the young guy in there? After getting 16 yards last week, that was the key for the win for Florida State. Miami and Syracuse. Canes bring the A game. That question answered very, very early. Ken Dorsey. Trying for a 33rd straight win for Miami. Willis McGee, second play of the game. Look at that. Look at that defense. Some guys had some ankles. They just had no wheels. Come on. It's just we call it thick ankles. <laughs> well, you call it thick ankles because that implies they're not real quick. Is that is that what you're saying? Yes, the ankles are thick. Look at the block. Yeah. And Aubrey Johnson, he catches passes. He, he plows into people and makes good blocks, huh? Dorsey was very efficient. He started 10 for 10 over the middle. Ethnic Sands back to the end zone. You know, beard injured. Other guys got to step up and make plays. They did it today. Absolutely. You see, once again here, look at McGahee. Just be very patient till the hole develop, then burst through it. And once again, it was a thick ankle race, and it's not going to happen. And Willis <laughs> McGahee scores a touchdown. Look at this, though. Fake punt. Up 35-7. Freddie Capshaw to Sean Taylor. He was the guy who scored in the reverse punt return against Pittsburgh. You know why they run that play? Virginia Tech has to spend a little time in practice this week worried about a fake. Is that what they do? Yeah, Absolutely. So Set up future games. All right. If that's the, if that's the rationale, up big on the road against the Cowboys. <laughs> Got to come it. up with something. Larry Coker's a nice guy. He wouldn't do that to Coach P. He would. 565 total offense for Miami. Johnson, six reception, 181 yards. And Dorsey, workman like 16 of 25, 345. Did not throw an interception. Talked about the Hokies. Lee Suggs, emotional, comes on the field for his final game. And they turn it around on special teams. What else? Justin Hamilton, the block. Daryl Tapp scoops it, scores. Cavs were up three zip until that. Game totally turned around at that point. And Suggs gets it going. Nice job of running downhill by Lee Suggs. Huh? I love oh, yeah. that. I love the power running. Get Lee Suggs out in the open. Let him run downhill. That's what he does best. And Suggs did it all by himself there, the offensive line. But Matt Schaub. 
was on fire early. Yeah, he, he came into this game as one of the hottest quarterbacks in the country. He finds Heath Miller. They missed the PAT. It was still 14-9, but Suggs in the fourth quarter bangs it in there. He had 108 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns. He only had to complete five passes to get the win. Yeah, that, that's exactly what Virginia Tech wants to do. They just want to run the football. They don't want to have to throw. They didn't have to. That was surprising because Virginia was playing very well. And Virginia Tech holds in Pittsburgh in the snow and the cold, just like it should be for a backyard brawl. Both teams feature quarterbacks from the Pittsburgh area. Rod Rutherford pressured, rolled out. This was not his finest day. Angela Estrada with the pick. West Virginia scored a couple of plays later. Went up 17-10. Third quarter. Ooh, Rutherford. Uh, yeah. Oy. Off the head of a lineman there. Ben Collins recovers for the Mountaineers. And then Rashid Marshall, their sophomore quarterback. Look at the ability wow. to get away from the rush. Keep it downfield on target to Phil Braxton. 24-10. West Virginia to the fourth quarter now. Pittsburgh trying to rally. Rutherford, who you going to look for? Well, you look for number one. The freshman hauls it in, has the speed to get around the corner, cuts the lead to seven. Pittsburgh holds, gets the ball back, drives more than 80 yards, but on fourth and 13, desperation. Rutherford pressured in the end zone, and it's batted away by Ben Collins and the Mountaineers celebrate on Pittsburgh's field. A very satisfying victory for the arch rivals in West Virginia. To close out this season, wins at Virginia Tech on a gutsy goal line stand and wins at Pittsburgh by defending a pass in the end zone. And that is a pretty terrific end of the season for a West Virginia team. It's back to back for Ralph Region. Wake Forest trying to state its case to a bowl committee, eligible but not exactly on solid ground. Scott McBride and Chris Downs. This is a wonderful job of fouling your blockers on a screen to the outside by Chris Downs. Takes it down the sidelines in for the score. Fabulous job of fouling your blockers, your offensive line. Smart play. Thank you. Very disappointing game last week against Virginia, but a very strong save. They jumped on a 27 0 against a pretty good team earlier. I really like this right here. This guy is EJ Henderson, a butt is fine. Look, come in here, get the no big stock on Corey Randall. I don't here. Come on, 42 is a final for the Butkus. What a great play. This is sweet. Where Ralph Friesen's done this a couple years in a row now. You, you have a nice 10 win season. You sing the fight song in the locker room. You're headed for a nice bowl game. First time they ever had back to back 10 win seasons. Nick Bryan, efficient, 275 and a pair of touchdowns. Bruce Perry back in the mix with 85 yards rushing. The ACC Bowl picture. Now we know that Florida State's headed to a bowl game, almost certainly the Sugar Bowl against the SEC champion, NC State. Bit of a controversial Gator Bowl bid, I'd say, over a Maryland team that, that beat them. I think it comes down to which team travel. Well, obviously, we know that North Carolina State will, but the question is Wake Forest. Will they get a bowl? I thought that they deserved a chance at a bowl last year. Maybe this Not year. Not the way they played today. Not the way they played today. Oh, it doesn't matter how they play. They still have a record that they qualify for a bowl. They deserve a shot at going to a bowl. Wake Forest, with those three question marks, they got to wait and see what happens in conferences like Conference USA. Perhaps there might be a slot for the Demon Deacons, the AC on here. Will they play better against Hawaii? It came out geeked up in front of a big, loud crowd. Well, Fourth and five. I don't know about this. Deep in their own end, they fake a punt. I guess. First quarter, why not? Wow. Second quarter. Scoreless game doesn't work, obviously. Then Alabama had trouble kicking field goals, so they fake the field goal. This one does work. Ray Fulgham takes the pitch. They would score a couple plays later. Fourth quarter, 14-3. Tyler Watts rolls. Finds Sam Collins. Waltz is in for the easy score. It's 21-3 at that point. Then Timmy Chang rallies the Rainbow Warriors. Well, Timmy Chang's had a great season. See him step up in the pocket. Beautiful pass there. Jeremiah Cockyarn, 70-yard touchdown. Later in the fourth quarter, Hawaii driving. Chang in the gun. The little Chad Owens. Knifes into the end zone. Two-point conversion failed. Still 21-16. Last chance on the onside kick. They try to get that high rug bounce, but it goes out of bounds short of the 10-yard mark there. And Alabama finds the penalty. They win it 21-16. Dennis Franchoni, he's kind of a perfectionist. He's not going to be happy with that performance necessarily. Now they can hang out in the Allens and enjoy some fun and sun. And a nice, nice season for Alabama, obviously a 10-3. Well, absolutely. Run for 300 yards, though. You'd think you'd beat Hawaii more than 21-16. Interesting game. Well, you get five turnovers. You convert it into seven points. Yeah, that just that's not, 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 not what they had in mind. Kentucky also ineligible for the bowl. And Guy Morris had to suspend four players for the first quarter. Some disciplinary problems in Kentucky. Just a listless, non-effort in Knoxville against the Volunteers. who were very, very efficient. Boston to Derek Tinsley. It's 14-zip. J-Lud struggled big time. 
fires to Derek Abney. Remember, he had 406 last year against the balls. Well, I thought right. Tennessee did a great job today of coming out defensively, being very aggressive. They used their speed. They got in his face. They made him move his feet. He never was comfortable. See him backing up there. Never was able to set his feet. He had a bad day throwing the ball. Good day throwing the ball for Kloss and Tinsley was the weapon here. Catches another touchdown pass, and Tennessee runs it to 8 and 4. The second straight shot after that volunteer defense. Lorenzen, 59 yards on 9 of 23. Only about 350 short of last year's total. Great job by the Tennessee defense. They only 172 yards offensively. I thought going into this game, when you look at a quarterback like Jared Lorenzen, he would throw for at least 300 yards again in this game. But the way that he's played the last couple of weeks, I was very surprised at Kentucky today. Not putting points on the board, which really surprised me. Here's another surprise, Mark. In Fort Collins, Colorado State trying to close out the Mountain West season perfect. But the ball been already locked up. And UNLV, nothing to lose. Gives the ball to Larry Kroom. 57-yard pickup. CSU ranked 13th in the coaches poll. Excellent defense. They gave up 221 of the day to Kroon. And a lot of it was just right at their defense, right up the middle. You know, quick hitters, right at them. Down eight, Rashawn Sanders gets the handoff for the Rams. Cecil Sapp nicked up a bit. Sanders step it up, gets in the end zone. They convert the two-point conversion, tie the game at 30. Bet Kurt Natkes drops back after a Rams field goal. Put CSU up. The Rebels drive 80 yards for a winning touchdown. The one manly in the end zone is JR's team. They finish at five and seven. They spoil the perfect conference record for the Rams, and they're going to knock CSU way down in the polls. Now with the third and loss. And you go into the Liberty Bowl thinking to yourself, you know, at a down note, that's just not what you wanted to do. You wanted to go in there positive, with playing with a lot of confidence, and obviously defensively now a lot of question marks. See Cecil Sappy did a courageous job running for one Toledo. Of course, we'll take on that Marshall team in the championship game. In the snow, on one leg, left, which was brilliant here. Pump fake, Jason Rader, back of the end zone, 10-7 Marshall. Left, which then, to Darius Watts. And you see the snow, he can barely move. The game didn't mean a lot except for his stats, and they put him out there. It's, it's risky at yeah, best. But as a senior, his last game at home in front of the home right. fan, last regular season game, I think he wanted to play with his teammates and go out the way that he did. I thought it was phenomenal throwing for over 400 yards in this game. But the offensive line did a great job of protecting him. He uh, didn't take a lot of hits. You're right. I think, I think that's a good point. His last game, great career. Let the crowd salute him. Because under normal, normal circumstances, a guy can't move around very well. It's very risky to have him. How about